I want to answer a question from one of my followers about why I teach consumer behavior. This question came in a DM and I want to appreciate all of you who write comments and ask questions, whether on the channel, through DMs and the like. The question why I teach consumer behavior actually will also explain why consumer behavior matters in today's world and how it's a money maker subject. Now, another question I got on a light note, Millicent asked me in a DM about my orange tree, whether it's real. I don't know whether in the picture it doesn't look real, but these are the oranges that I get from that tree. They are not the super big size or what, but they are tasty, they are nice. She asked whether they are sweet, they are. Anyway, let's go back to the topic. I have talked about many topics under the umbrella of consumer behavior in this channel. Because I do consumer behavior on Thursdays and other business topics, you know, marketing communications, those are the subjects that I teach. And then I do motivation or life skills on Monday. And that reflects a balance of how I actually operate as a teacher. I like to give students life skills and also to give them now the subject that will enable them to get to do business, support a business, or make money from whatever it is they are doing. Now, this is a subject that many of my students at the University of Nairobi take as part of their marketing option. It's offered at the School of Business under the marketing option, but also it's done by students who are taking finance, management, science, and even human resources at times, and even insurance, who choose to take it as an elective in order to get a broader understanding of the place of the consumer in business. One reason why people ask this question, they are saying, the world is fast changing, it's so dynamic. Are you sure the subject of consumer behavior is still relevant? That's the way people put it. They also ask if it's still relevant in the age of social media when people are so distracted by too much information from all manner of sources, from traditional media to new media, from Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, name it. When you wake up in the morning, you've got too much information at your fingertips. But this question is really important and that's why I decided to take it. This is a question I want to address because many people sometimes assume that because things have changed or because of modernity that some things don't matter. But no, the question of the relevance of consumer behavior in modern business today and in the current marketing environment is so critical because if consumers are bombarded with so much communication, then you must be able to find a way to stand out if you are going to reach them with your own messaging. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Catherine Gaho from SBO Research and I also teach at the University of Nairobi School of Business. Let me say that I created my business, SBO Research, to enable me to practice what I teach, consumer behavior which I am totally passionate about. I make my money from consumer behavior. That's what I eat, drink, live it pays for my lifestyle. And that's why I'm so passionate to help you understand and the students who are doubting its value, why you must invest in learning about consumer behavior. Now in this video, that's all I'm going to do. I'll answer the question about the relevance of consumer behavior in marketing today, in the world today. Do like this video and stay with me and please subscribe to my channel and help share the videos with other people. Now I post on consumer behavior and marketing communication on Thursdays and on life skills on Mondays. So you can follow me, I do two videos in a week. Now first let's go to the definition, what is consumer behavior all about? Now consumer behavior is the study of how individuals make decisions to spend their available resources, and that is money, time, energy, and the like on consumption-related items. The first thing that makes this subject so interesting is first, we are all consumers. We all make these decisions on what to buy with our money, how to spend our money. We make these decisions on a regular basis. Shopping is one of the most important tasks that we allocate time to 
in actual fact, some people even go to the mall, go to the supermarket on a regular basis and actually count it as one of the ways of spending calories to lose weight because you must shop, you must buy the things you need. Now, consumer behavior includes what we buy, that's the goods and services, why we buy, the motivation and influences around what we buy, and the frequency even, how, how frequently we buy, when we buy these things. You know, I know that there is interest in timing, occasion of purchase. Why do you buy? Why did you buy at that particular time? Why couldn't you hold it on for later? You know, where do you buy? What channels do you use? And how often do you buy? This, together with the factors that influence the choices we make, that's what consumer behavior is about. And think about it. There are so many choices today that if you're a marketer, if you're a business person, you're running a business, how will you get people to make a choice that is favorable to you if you do not know about that consumer? So as you can see, consumer behavior reflects the totality of the consumer decisions that we all make with respect to how we acquire things, how we consume them, and even how we dispose them. It's also about ideas. We consume ideas, we consume entertainment, and the like. If you think about this practically, as a consumer of all manner of goods and services, you must realize that you work hard for your money every single day, and then you spend most of that money buying goods and services. In fact, most people spend all what they earn within a month of earning it from buying goods and services. You buy food, you pay rent for the house you live in, or you pay transportation to go to work or to go to wherever. You spend on household goods, on clothing, on entertainment, savings, and so on. And you allocate the money you earn largely to consumption. Now, wouldn't you think then this is a very important area to understand, even as a consumer, to understand why, why or how you make those decisions. The study of consumer behavior is about that. It's looking at the behavior of a consumer, how they make the decisions they make in selecting what to buy. Why marketers are interested in this is that once you understand it, as a marketer, as a business person, is that you're able to know how to influence that consumer to buy from you. And so it gives you an edge. It gives you a complete edge because you know the consumer, you know what they want, you know why, you know what they're thinking, you know their attitudes and the like, and that's why the business people invest in understanding consumer behavior. That's why they want to hire people who understand consumer behavior. But let me get specific. I'll give you six reasons why. First is growing competition. If there's competition in the business, and we cannot argue about this because the question of increasing competition is not in doubt at all. The question would be, what does that mean for you as a business person today? How will you win the consumer in a competitive environment? And I can tell you, it starts by understanding that consumer very well. I'll tell you that my business, SBO Research, works mainly on this question of helping businesses understand their consumers. We work on how to help businesses understand their consumers better. And I can tell you that we provide clients with information on consumer motivations, perceptions, attitude, decision-making factors that influence. We even focus on pricing, on marketing communications, testing communications to see whether they will deliver the right message. Last week I talked about communication appeals and uh, I was remembering many of the things that we do in my business as I talked about that because all this practice has helped me understand that the firms that don't understand consumer behavior, they struggle very hard to get the attention or to get the customer to actually buy from them. I've been in this business for many years and at no time have I had clients say that they have too much information or that they don't need more consumer information. And that is a service that will always be in demand, no matter what changes. Consumer behavior understanding will always be in demand. It will be always a money maker. So it's a worthy subject to do for as long as there will be competition in the marketplace. And the second thing is, I think I'll move faster now because of time, the fast pace of new product introduction. 
that products are being introduced all the time. Look at the phone models, look at the cars, TV sets. Even in real estate, the house design that was being done a year ago is not the one being done today. And this applies to all products, even basic products. If it's soap, now we're going to herbal. The other day I had someone talk about uh, Moringa soap and the like. You find even all kinds of products. If it's clothing and shoes, fashion is changing very fast. If you look at luxury goods, which I talked about in my video on um, conspicuous consumption, everything is changing very fast. And so you need to understand what the consumer wants and how they want it in greater detail for you to be able to get to the finer point. Every product or service is designed to connect with the consumer and to address their wants. So just think about it. How do you do that without understanding the consumer? Now, because of this, the third point is related. is about shorter product life cycles. That products come into the market and they don't last a very long time because new products are coming to take their place. And this happens a lot in the fashion industry where we've seen great change until there is this concept of fast fashion, real estate, entertainment, Things are changing very fast. Indeed, today we are also talking about co-creation, a new way of working between the business and the consumer to help develop or refine the products where the consumer opinion and feedback becomes a major part of product development. Now, fourth is the growth of segmentation as a strategy. That is the recognition of the need to divide the market into segments and to select a small part of that market to serve a small segment. The whole process requires great insights about the consumer. In actual fact, in digital marketing today, one needs to fully understand the market segment you're serving in order to connect with them. The idea is not to look for a big segment, but to think of like a niche or very small fragment of the whole market, the whole global market, in order to, to fully connect. In fact, today they call it the dot the fine-tuned market that you're focusing on. And that's a very clearly defined group of consumers to target. You cannot do this without understanding the behavior of consumers in that global segment. The fact that we are all very concerned about climate change and the changes in society, so the government has passed many regulations and all that to help all of us be focused on this subject of uh, protecting the environment. And where does consumer behavior come in? In all that, it's the recognition of need to protect the environment helps us recognize that we need to understand this whole business of consumer usage and how, they, how we can make optimal decisions regarding, for example, packaging in order to support the consumer while protecting the environment. Here in Kenya, we have the plastic packaging ban and which took many businesses back to the drawing board in terms of the question of packaging, how to address packaging. In order to address all these changes, you have to work with the consumers to find alternatives that are suitable, that will fit them. The seventh and final is the increasing use of marketing in non-government organizations, non-traditional marketing things, for example, not-for-profit farms and political marketing. So NGOs they do a lot of uh, knowledge, attitude and practice studies, basically an effort to understand the consumer's awareness, consumer knowledge about something, consumer attitudes and practices in order to be able to do interventions to help improve a situation. In our business, sometimes we work with NGOs or non-government organizations and they are looking to understand sometimes health-seeking behavior of vulnerable groups, how to communicate with different kinds of groups, and the like. And the whole idea is to promote practices that are more beneficial or protective of the society. You can see why I'm telling you that this consumer behavior thing is powerful. It's a profit maker, it's a money maker. If you understand consumer behavior very well, you will get somebody to help understand their business. You can work for businesses, for entrepreneurs, and even big corporate full stop. To sum up the relevance of consumer behavior today, and why I continue to teach it is supported by six points. Growing competition, fast pace of new product introduction, shorter product life cycles, growth of segmentation as a strategy, environmental concerns, and growth of marketing in non-marketing, non-profit areas like NGOs and 
politics. Thank you for staying with me. Do like this video and share it with other people who you think might benefit from it. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can learn more about all these topics that I post about consumer behavior and be able to use it as a subject to enable you reach your customers better and make even as a consumer understand how why you purchase and why you spend all your money on consumption thank you so much and best wishes we all need to elevate our mindset at this time